Welcome to the Summoner 1 to 80 Skills Guide. In this guide, we will cover all of your skills as you train to be loved by Carby better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... ...to this. This guide is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV, or the MMO genre in general. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for A Realm Reborn, Level 60 for Heaven's Word, 70 for Stormblood, and then finally at level 80 for Shadowbringers. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build? It'll make sense at 80. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. With that all out of the way, let's begin! Level 1. Ruin. At a cost of 200 mana, this basic spell does 180 potency. You'll be spamming this spell a lot as you level up. Point at the enemy and fire it off. Use it any time, it's all you have left. Level 2, Bio. Costing 400 mana, this is an instant cast spell that does no damage on impact. Instead, it is a damage over time, or dot, effect. In this game, dots do damage, or tick, every 3 seconds. So we can take the duration of a dot, divide by 3, and multiply that by the potency of the dot for the total potency. If Bio lasts the entire duration, it does 200 potency. This isn't much higher than Ruin, but this is a side effect of being low level. If your enemy will last the whole 30 seconds, it is still better to use. However, due to the fact that this is a dot, you do not want to use it over and over on the same enemy. This will reset the timer of the dot, but not do any extra damage. So throw it on an enemy, then swap back to Ruin. Don't be too worried about the long timer on the dot, Practice using Bio now, just to develop the habit. On bosses, try to always keep your dots up. Level 4, Physic. <laughs> Level 4, Summon. This instant cast off-global ability will summon an adorable little emerald carbuncle to your side. I will be saying he is blue from now on. This will give you access to the pet hotbar with 7 actions. Away will send Carby away. Heal will cause him to return to and follow you. Place will give you a ground targeting circle and let you move him to a specific location within range of you. Stay will make Carby stop and sit still. Guard is on by default. This is a stance that will allow Carby to fight any enemies that you attack or attack you first. Steady will make Carby not fight unless you use the final action in the list, Sick, ordering Carby to attack your target. And he'll listen quite closely, proving Blue Carby is the goodest of boys. He will attack enemies with the action Gust. This has a recast of 3 seconds, much like Servitix, and does 20 potency to the target and all enemies within 5 yalms. As such, Blue Carby is basically a permanent AoE dot. He is also a mage pet, so he can attack from a distance. Level 6, Miasma. 500 MP cost and not an instant cast. It does 20 potency on hit and 200 potency dot, much like Bio. So in total, 220 potency. So now we have two dots and Miasma being slightly stronger thanks to the initial hit. So now we can use Miasma, then Bio, and then return to spamming Ruin until everything is dead. At level 8 we gain the roll action, Addle. I will not be going into the roll actions, but be sure to add these to your hotbar. They are useful in their own ways, so find room for them now. Level 10, Eggy Assault. This is our first example of a skill with multiple charges. 
It has a 30 second cooldown and can store two charges. Upon using this skill, you will begin charging in next use, much like any normal OGCD ability. This is not an ability though, but a spell. This means it activates the GCD, so treat it like Ruin or your dots. Using Eggy Assault will order Blue Carby to use Downburst. This will do 100 potency to the target and enemies within 5 yarms of the target. On 3 or more enemies, this is your strongest attack. On 2, it is only stronger than Ruin. As you're quickly noticing, Blue Carby is an AoE pet. The more enemies you're up against, the better he is. Keep this in mind for party content. Solo, don't aggro too much at once. You're still just a squishy little mage. Level 12, Resurrection. This costs a massive 2400 mana and takes a whopping 8 seconds to cast. This returns the player back to life with very low HP. You can do it to anyone, even if not in your party. Typically, your party's healer will handle raises, but out in the world you don't have one. Plus, maybe it's the healers who died. You can save the day in the worst of cases. Level 15, Summon 2. This skill does not automatically unlock like your previous skills. This is because it is a quest skill. As you level, you should be doing your class quests for not just gear, but skills. This is the first of many, and all future quest skills will be merely noted on screen. Just keep doing the quests. Here is our second Carby, Yellow Carby. And while I love the Kali Yellow, Yellow Carby is dumb and stupid. Okay, he's a lot better than he used to be. His basic attack is Gouge for 40 potency, much stronger for single target situations. Perfectly timed for your first dungeon. You can start learning to swap pets back and forth. During trash pulls with multiple enemies, Blue Carby is far superior, but on bosses, Yellow is going to be way better. Note the shared recast timer. It's more of a formality as swapping pets every 3 seconds has no use for anything. Even swapping to yellow Carby for just a shield, then back to blue Carby takes a little longer than that. His attack isn't his selling point though. He's actually a support pet, as his eggy assault is glittering topaz. This gives you a defensive barrier on your character for 30% of your max HP. This is a really, really beefy shield, even for a mage. In solo instances, it could be a huge help. In party content, it's not all that good. It does find use, but not quite as often. If there's an emergency and healers are struggling, it could be the difference between life and death. Unlike blue Carby, this Carby is a melee Carby. It can't attack enemies unless it runs up to them. At level 18, we gain the roll action, Swift Cast. This is really good for resurrection, but using it in your normal rotation is good later on. But if you're in a situation that calls for using resurrection, be sure to just use it on resurrection. Level 18, Energy Drain. This ability is on a 30 second cooldown and does 100 potency of damage to the target. It additionally gives you Aether Flow 2. The 100 potency seems worthless, but as an OGCD, it's free damage. But what about that Aether Flow 2 effect? We now have a new gauge. Two diamonds that light up upon using Energy Drain. The 2 of the Aether Flow 2 is because you gain two stacks of Aether Flow. You can now spend each cast separately, but right now at level 18, we only have one thing to spend them on. Level 18, Fester. This is also an ability with a very short 5 second recast. Its base 100 potency on a target is unimportant and really bad. However, let's look at the additional effect. If you have dots applied to the enemy you use Fester on, the potency increases by 100 for each dot. So with one dot, it is 200 potency, and both dots, it's a whopping 300 potency. One note we need to watch out for is that using Fester immediately after a dot can use it to not recognize the dot. Due to server ticks, you have to wait a tiny bit to ensure the dot applies, then Vester. So now we have what is essentially a very, very early opening rotation. With how summon it works though, this is a good time to build our first opener and go over the thought process. Prey pool. Summon our pet if one isn't already up. 
place pet near the target, then do the following. Miasma, Bio, Energy Drain, Fester, Ruin, Ruin, Fester, and then spam Ruin until you can repeat this sequence. We will always want to pet out, so that part seems obvious enough. We start with our dots because they both get only a full potency after a very long duration, and because needing them on for Fester. We then energy drain between GCDs, using the instant cast nature of Bio to lose no time between GCDs. This is called weaving. It can be done most effectively with any instant cast spells. We use Festa here for the same reason, and we can fit both in a single weave without clipping into our GCD time. We then have to wait out the 5 second recast of Fester, so we use two ruins for filler. We can then use our second Fester. This leaves us with only Eggy Assault and Ruin to use. Since on single targets like this opener is made for, Eggy Assault will only do a weaker than Ruin AoE or a self shield. We just don't use it leaving us only Ruin to use until our dots fall off. It's extremely basic, but Summon it builds upon this flow all the way up until level 80. Level 20, Maim and Mend. Here is a trait, or passive ability. This trait is basically a simple plus 10% effectiveness. You probably won't even notice it. At level 24, we gain the role action, Lucid Dreaming. Level 26, Corruption Mastery, and Bio 2. The trait of Corruption Mastery simply upgrades Bio to Bio 2. The icon will change to match this, and a new updated tooltip for Bio 2. It now costs 600 mana, which doesn't really mean anything. It ups the 20 potency of Bio to 30 potency, increasing the power to 300 potency total. Because of this, we want to switch to using this before Miasma, since it's so much more effective. Be sure to still only use Fester once both dots are applied to the enemy. Level 30, Bane. This ability is a very short 10 second recast off global cooldown. It will take your dots of your chosen target and spread the effect to all enemies within 8 yawns, much further than most other target scented AoEs. The downsides are twofold. The duration is only as high as the dot on the target enemy, so if a dot has 20 seconds left on the target and you use Bane, all enemies will get a copy of the dot at 20 seconds remaining. The other downside is it cuts the potency of the attack to only 40% on all targets affected by Bane. This is extremely low. So a 300 potency bio would become only 120 potency. This is still really strong when you consider you don't have to cast your dots on every individual enemy now. But assuming all enemies will live for the full 30 second duration of your dots, on anywhere up to 3 or 4 enemies it is probably better to just individually dot every enemy. Knowing when and when not to bane is going to be very tricky and take learning the flow of the game. At least until level 50 and beyond. Time to kill is fairly low early on, but once you get into higher levels, Bane does a better job of lasting the full duration. It also does a better job of hitting more targets, since tanks will likely start pulling more enemies at once. Bigger the group of enemies, the better Bane will be. Such is the way with all AoE attacks. One other note I glossed over is the 15% chance to entirely reset the timers of the dots. This is very low. You also really only want to be using Bane immediately after applying your dots to your initial target, so at most that 15% will give you 1-2 to two ticks of extra damage. It adds up on bigger pulls, but it's otherwise not too huge. The same thing with Fester applies here. Do not use immediately after your second dot. Hold a tiny bit, a half a global at most, to ensure both dots are applied. At level 30, you will be able to undertake your first job quest to obtain a soul stone, as well as your first job action. You must also complete all class quests from your guild. The other requirement is a level 20 main story quest, Self Management. This takes place soon after joining a grand company. This won't be an issue on normal servers, but any server with preferred status and the road to 70 buff will likely lead new players to be 30 long before the story threshold is met. There are also further main story quest locks at level 35 and 45. Level 30, Summon 3. 
Say goodbye to Yellow Carby inside dungeons. Ifrit Eggy is your new best friend. Your hard-fought job quest awards you with the Attacker Pet. His basic attack is 80 potency. This is stronger than Blue Carby up to 4 targets, which is a huge potency increase. Depending on the dungeon and how much the tank pulls, Ifrit is going to be better for the whole run for this alone. He also has an Eggy Assault of Crimson Cyclone, a single target 250 potency hit on a chosen target. This Eggy Assault is weaker than Blue Carby's downburst on three or more targets, so up to three, use Ifrit. More than three, Blue Carby is going to do more. Ifrit is also a melee pet, like Summon 2. He will also be the pet I use for the rest of the video, unless talking specifically about another pet. Level 35, Energy Siphon. This is simply an AoE version of Energy Drain, sharing a recast timer of 30 seconds. It does 40 potency to all enemies within 5 yalms of initial target, so on as few as 3 enemies, Energy Siphon is superior. We also have an extra upgrade. Yellow Carby gets an upgrade. For mastering Earth Aether, we can now rock band us a giant chicken nugget. Titan Eggy is a slightly improved version of Summon 2, with none of the fanfare of skills or traits. His basic attack is a 60 potency rock buster, and his Eggy Assault is Earth and Armor, and does the same 30% self shield. Very tiny upgrade, but an upgrade. Level 38. Ruin 2. Despite the name, Ruin 2 is weaker than Ruin 1 at 160 potency. Not much weaker, but still weaker. It also costs 400 mana. The awesome part is that it is an instant cast spell. This means you can finally move and attack consistently. If you can't get Ruin out due to dodging attacks or doing mechanics, Ruin 2 is there to save you. It also allows you to weave like we did with Bio. Trying to use abilities while your GCD is finished is pretty bad, so now anytime you need to weave OGCDs, you can use Ruin 2, then use the OGCDs while your GCD rolls. Level 40, Maim and Mend 2. Same thing as Maim and Mend, but 30% increased damage instead. Again, not really important. Level 40, Eggy Assault 2. This is the last Arcanist skill we will get. Just like Iggy Assault 1, it can hold two charges and has a base 30 second charge timer. Each summon has a different spell. Blue Carby has Glittering Emerald. This does 30 potency to the target and all enemies within 5 yams of it. It also creates a small puddle with a 5 yam radius underneath the initial target that works at the dot. It does 30 potency per tick for 9 seconds, so in total this is a 120 potency dot per enemy. Yellow Carby should already be Titan by now, unless Road to 70 happened, but has Shining Topaz, a 200 potency AoE hitting all enemies within 5 yams of it. Titan Eggy is Mountain Buster, a 250 potency attack on all enemies within 5 yams of Titan, a really good AoE for being the support pet. Ifrit Eggy has Flaming Crush, a 250 potency hit on a target and 125 potency on all enemies within 5 yams of the initial enemy. And this is way stronger than what Blue Carby does. At this point, just stick to Ifrit for entire dungeons. Trying to maximize the damage between Ifrit and Blue Carby is too much work for what it's worth, unless you are a huge min-maxer, which is beyond the scope of this guide. Pop these off anytime they are good to use, as they're all stronger than Ruin in the correct circumstances, as noted for each pet. Level 40, Outburst. This is a really good skill for AoE. For 400 MP, this does 70 potency to a target and all targets within 5 yams of the initial enemy. So on 2 targets, this is weaker than Ruin. On 3 or more, it is better than Ruin. And as I've said, more enemies hit, the more damage this does. Trash pulls, this is your go-to ability for filler. Spam it plenty after you've done your dot duty and done your eggy assault. At level 44, we gain our final roll action, Surecast. Level 45, we have no official skills. We do, however, get Garuda Eggy, a direct upgrade to summon one. Her basic attack is a 30 potency AoE on the target and enemies near it, up from 20 with Carby. 
Eggy Assault is Aerial Slash. 150 potency AoE to target and enemies nearby it. This is a 50 potency increase over Kirby. Eggy Assault 2 is Slipstream. 50 potency and a 9 second ground dot for 50 potency per hit at 200 potency total. This is an 80 potency increase. All in all, this is a huge upgrade and makes Summon 1 usable again. Garuda for trash pulls, Titan for solo play, and some very fringe uses outside that, and Ifrit for bosses. Exceptions exist all around it, but in general, this is how we want to handle things. There is also an odd little quirk with Garuda. This applies to Titan too, yet Eggies do not downgrade with level syncing. From now on, Summon 1 is Garuda, and Summon 2 is Titan. Same potency levels too. This is the only fully permanent upgrade of all jobs. It's a bit special. Level 50, Enkindle. On a 180 second recast, we have an OGCD pet command that tells them to use their signature attack. Let's go over each one. Garuda has Aerial Blast, which does 350 potency to a target and all enemies within 5 yarms of the original target. That's a pretty hefty hit, especially for an AoE. Titan has Earthen Fury. Centered around Titan, it does a 300 potency hit and an AoE puddle for 15 seconds dealing 20 potency per tick. In total, this is 400 potency per enemy. This is even above Garuda, but her eggy assaults make her way stronger. Ifrit has Inferno. 300 potency in a cone in front of him and a dot on all enemies hit for 20 potency per tick for 15 seconds. Once again, 400 potency. The cone shape, however, makes it way worse than either Garuda's or Titan's, since those are full circles where this is only a small area in front of him. Weave these in wherever you can. So it's been a while, but let's build another opener. We have a lot more now. I only went over general use cases and not any good openers, mostly because of the specific use cases of each pet. For all openers, I assume single target, since AoE is a lot more free form and depends on enemy counts. But anyway, let's craft one, then let's go through it. Pre-pull, summon your pet, Ifrit ideally. Use place to put him in front of the boss. Then do the following. Bio 2, Energy Drain, Miasma, Eggy Assault, and Kindle, Eggy Assault 2, Fester, Eggy Assault, Lucid Dreaming, Eggy Assault 2, Fester, then Ruin Spam Filler until your dots fall off and your OG CDs come back up. So obviously we want to pet out, but we want to avoid Titan if our goal is damage since Eggy Assault 1 for Titan is a shield. We place him in front of the boss so he starts attacking the moment we do with no run up time. As mentioned before, Bio is stronger currently, so we want to start with that to get it rolling. We then immediately energy drain to start the cooldown and make use of the weaving space. Then Miasma to have both dots running. We then Eggy Assault to get the charge started, and weave in and Kindle. And Kindle is on a really long recast timer, so the sooner we use it up, the sooner we can get it back. We then use Eggy Assault 2 for the same reason, get the charges rolling, and get a weave to use Fester. We then use our remaining assaults while we wait for Fester to come off cooldown and use the charges we have. Lucid Dreaming is only here to keep our mana up, ideally used in openers and then on cooldown. We then Fester again and are out of OGCDs and Eggy Assaults. This leaves us with just Ruin spamming till we have stuff again. It's certainly not optimal, but that's not the important part. What matters is building some muscle memory for level 80 when we have our full kit. Front-loading our abilities to start cooldowns is typical, and synergizes with party buffs. So with that all done, we have our A Realm Reborn toolkit. Get into Heavensward and you can start doing the quests through more skills. But one other thing somebody gets at 50 is the Eggy Glamour system, from the Arcanist Guild. From this point on, the role of Ifrit shall be played by Blue Carby. Because Blue Carby is the best, and you should use him too. Get good. Scrub. Level 52, Pain Flayer. We finally have an AoE use for Aetherflow. A 5 second recast and 5 yom radius like almost every other AoE. It does 130 potency to all enemies hit for 1 charge of Aetherflow. On 2 targets, Fester is still better. 3 or more, 
pain flare away. More enemies, the better. Level 54, Ruin Mastery and Ruin 3. The trait Ruin Mastery upgrades Ruin to Ruin 3. Ruin 3, meanwhile, is a small 20 potency increase on Ruin 1, but it adds up, and makes the loss from Ruin 2 a lot bigger. In exchange for that instant cast on Ruin 2, you have to give up 40 potency instead, so be ready to commit to Ruin 3 spam as much as you can. Level 56, Try Disaster. The skill is a beauty. On a 50 second recast, it does 300 potency to a target and applies both Bio 2 and Miasma. So in total, this is 820 potency if the dots get their whole duration. This allows you to dot multiple enemies even easier. Manually dot one, try disaster the other. Can also use this after Bane and big packs of enemies, especially if there is one enemy who is a lot bigger and has a bigger health pool. Level 58, Dreadworm Trance. This one has many layers to it, and even more will be added as we go on. Let's break down with what it starts as. It has a 55 second recast timer and lasts 15 seconds, displayed on a new UI element. It reduces all spell cast times by 2.5 seconds. This effectively makes Ruin 3, Miasma, and Outburst instant casts. This makes moving and attacking really good. No loss of damage like with having to use Ruin 2. It also has the additional effect of resetting the cooldown on Tri Disaster, so we can Tri Disaster, hit Dreadworm Trance, then use Tri Disaster again. This is some nice burst damage, and a good tool for lots of weaving, if need be. Use it on your Ruin Spam phase. Level 60, Death Flare. The 15 second recast is pure formality, pretend it doesn't exist, because of what the effects do. To start, this is a 400 potency nuke on a target, and is a 5 yom AoE around it, doing 200 potency to any additional enemy struck. However, you cannot use this skill outside of Dreadworm Trance. This is why the 15 second recast doesn't exist. There is no way to be able to use the Death Flare within 15 seconds of using it the last time. It also does one more thing, it ends your Dreadworm Trance, so because of this, we want to hold off on using Death Flare until the end of Dreadward and Trance. Or if it's AoE, we'll probably blow it early just to make sure we hit big packs of enemies harder and faster. But in single target, we'll more likely save it just to be sure we can get as many Ruin 3s in as we can while dodging mechanics. So, not much new, but it changes things enough to warrant a new opener. So let's build it up. Pre-pull, summon your pet, Ifrit ideally. Use place to put him in front of the boss, precast Ruin 3, and then do the following. Eggy Assault, Energy Drain, Tri Disaster, Eggy Assault 2, and Kindle, Fester, Eggy Assault, Lucid Dreaming, Eggy Assault 2, Fester, Dreadworm Trance, Ruin 3, Tri Disaster, Spam Ruin 3 until 2 seconds remaining on Dreadworm Trance. Death Flare, and then spam Ruin 3 until you have dots to put back up and OGCDs. So same as before, put your pet in range so it attacks sooner, but we're doing things way different with starting with a pre-pull cast of Ruin 3. Most random tanks you get won't give you any sort of countdown, but you'll get the feel of when casting Ruin 3 can get off at the same time as the tank pulls. We then go into Eggy Assault to get the recharge going. We then do a double weave of Energy Drain to get stacks, and Try Disaster to get dots going. This is a far better way of applying dots initially to a target, plus the 300 potency is too much to ignore from an OGCD. Eggy Assault 2 is next to get that recharge going too. And Kindle is next to get it out and Fester to start using our stacks. We have to wait a little before using the second Fester, so Eggy Assaults 1 and 2 into our second Fester. We end up double weaving it with Dreadworm Trance. After this double weave, we'll have to immediately get our GCD rolling again, so we ruin three before we try disaster. At this point, we have nothing else to spend, so we start our ruin three frailer spam under Dreadworm Trance. As it is about to run out, with about two seconds left, we'll Death Flare and be completely out of stuff to use. So now all we can do is ruin three and wait for cooldowns and our dots to fall off. 
An argument can also be made for holding Tri Disaster until later into Dreadworm Trance to maximize the uptime of your dots, but any party buffs your group might have gotten will ideally be up during this point, so we will be doing more damage now than holding it till later. There will be a few of those at 60, and there will be even more party buffs as we level up, so better to practice the early Tri Disaster now. Keep practicing and prepare for Stormblood. Level 62, Enhanced Ruin 2 and Ruin 4. Enhanced Ruin 2 itself does not enhance Ruin 2, as odd as that is. It adds an additional effect to Eggy Assault. Damaging an enemy with Eggy Assault will give you a permanent stack of further ruin, much like Aetherflow stacks. You can hold up to four stacks at once, but you won't be seeing four, as you want to be spending these stacks for their only use, Ruin 4. Ruin 4 does a whopping 300 potency and is an instant cast thanks to being an upgrade of Ruin 2. They also only cost 200 mana to use. We want to spend these. They're extremely important and powerful. Be sure to hit whatever you can. Level 64, Aether Pact. On a huge 180 second recast timer, Aether Pact orders your pet to use Devotion a 15 yom radius AoE that increases damage for everyone in range by 5%. This is a lot stronger than it sounds. Being party wide is really good, and 5% isn't really as small as you might think it would be. You really want to get this out during battles, any battle. As we've seen, we front load all of our damage, and so will many other people, so using this early into a fight is good. Just be sure you're 2-3 GCDs in before using it. There is such a time as too early, especially if you use it before a pull. Be sure the party is engaged first. Level 66, Corruption Mastery 2, Bio 3, and Miasma 3. Like the first version of Corruption Mastery, Mastery 2 is just a trait to upgrade your current skills, but it does both Bio and Miasma this time. Bio 3 is a 450 potency dot, and Miasma is as well, plus the additional 45 potency on hit. 495 potency. Because of this, if you have to manually apply dots, Miasma should come first. The same rotational rules all apply anyway. And as a side note, the full dot will become 180 potency when Bane is used. In general, this is a big power boost. Level 68, Enhanced in Kindle. This is another power boost and a lot simpler. And Kindle is now a 120 second recast timer. Use it more often than before. Just use it like normal. Level 70, Enhanced Dreadworm Trance. This is a very simple skill. Whether you use a Death Flare or let the timer run out, the end of Dreadworm Trance will grant you a stack of Dreadworm Aether. This fancy dragon head here shows this off. He will turn a little bit blue after your first trance, then after a second, fully blue. But this has no outright effect. Get two stacks of Aether and then we can use... Level 70. Summon Bahamut. Ready to start another Umbral Calamity? Demi Bahamut has a 30 second recast, but it's more like 120 due to needing two Dreadworm Trances to activate. He will stay for 20 seconds. You can also only summon him if you have a pet out already, as he will replace the pet you currently have out. When he is done, he will leave and automatically bring back your normal pet. He works differently from your pets too. Rather than an auto attack, Demi Bahamut will only attack if you attack, so during your summon Bahamut phase you need to keep attacking, especially because Bahamut's attack, Worm Wave, is a massive 150 potency. That's nearly double what Ifrit can do. So two Dreadworm Trances, summon Bahamut, and never stop casting. Be sure to use Ruin 2 where needed to keep the attacks going. He has one other trick though. Level 70, and Kindle Bahamut and Akmorn. And Kindle Bahamut is a different button from in Kindle. Keep that in mind. It also only has a 10 second recast timer. This is another reason to use Ruin 2, so you can weave Akmorn in with no GCD loss. And thanks to the 10 second recast, every Bahamut phase should do two Akmorns. Two is the magic number for summoner, if you couldn't tell. What Akmorn does is a 650 potency AoE nuke on a target and all enemies within 5 yams. All additional enemies will only take 325 potency though, but that is still a huge hit. 
so be sure to use Ockmoin shortly after summoning him, and then again before he leaves. 1300 potency on just a single target is huge to miss out on. This is your most important phase. You're going to live and die by this Eggy. Also, there is a size command. As you can see, Big Bahamut and Small Bahamut are very, very, very different. This applies locally and to all Bahamuts from all summoners. So, with Bahamut, our opener is going to take a major change. Pre-pull, summon your pet, if it ideally. Use place to put him in front of the boss, pre-cast Ruin 3, and then do the following. Eggy Assault, Energy Drain, Try Disaster, Eggy Assault 2, Lucid Dreaming, Eggy Assault, Aether Pact into Dreadworm Trance, Eggy Assault 2, Fester into Enkindle, Ruin 4, Try Disaster, Ruin 4, Fester, and then spam Ruin 3 until Death Flare, then spam Ruin 3 until you have stuff back up. Work your way to using Bahamut anytime you can. So a little shifting stuff around to prepare for level 80, and because of Demi Bahamut. It might seem like wasting Dreadworm Trance time is bad, but the sooner we get to Bahamut, the better. Since Dreadworm Trance doesn't buff Ruin 3, just cast times, it doesn't really matter if we waste possible instant casts during it. Abusing it for weaving times is really nice. We'll be seeing a major change though, don't get too used to it. Just keep to your usual flow of making sure enemies have dots up, and spending it off globals where you can, most effectively. So, Shadowbringers is going to be really, really hefty at the start. It's an aha moment for Summoner. Let's break it down one piece at a time. Level 72, Enhanced Dreadworm Trance 2. That whole having to use Dreadworm Trance twice to see Bahamut? That's gone now. Dreadworm Trance gives two stacks of Aether automatically. Every Dreadworm Trance is now access to Bahamut. This is great. Rather than every two minutes, we can get Bahamut every minute. That's a lot of Bahamuts that you really should be using when possible. On its own, this isn't too crazy. Let's start going into the crazy part. Level 72, Firebird Trance. Before we get into the effects, let's start with how we actually access this ability. It's not a new ability slot. It's an upgrade to Dreadworm Trance, but Dreadworm Trance is still there and has all the normal effects. Dreadworm Trance will become Firebird Trance upon completion of your Bahamut phase. It also shares a recast timer with Dreadworm Trance. Because of this, you're actually not getting Bahamut every minute. Instead, we get something better. When it finally comes off of cooldown, it has several effects. Starting off, it has the same effects of reducing cast time by 2.5 seconds and resetting the recast of Tri Disaster. The similarities end there, though. It lasts a whole 20 second duration and changes both Ruin 3 and Outburst into different skills. Ruin 3 becomes Fountain of Fire, increasing to a nice 250 potency, but costing 400 mana. This alone is nice, but there's an additional effect of granting Hellish Conduit. This is the only way to use the new version of Outburst. Outburst has become Brand of Purgatory. No mana cost, and does 350 potency to the target enemy, plus is a large 8 yom radius AoE, doing 175 potency to all additional enemies. This will spend the Hellish Conduit buff. So for the duration of Firebird Trance, we will be back and forth between using Fountain of Fire and Brand of Purgatory. And since we have no cast times on these, it should be very easy to maximize our spell output of 4 Fountain of Fires and 4 Brand of Purgatories. So now our main cycle is starting with nothing, setting ourselves up, going into Dreadworm Trance for Death Flare, summoning Demi Bahamut for 2 Ockmorns and 8 Worm Waves, and then finally going into Firebird Trance for 4 Fountains and Brands each. Be sure to use every resource each phase gives you for maximum effect. Level 74, Enhanced Eggy Assault. Ironically, this does not enhance Eggy Assault, but Eggy Assault 2. Eggy Assault 2 now gives stacks of further ruin, so now both assaults give ruin 4 stacks, for 4 every minute. This is also why maximum stacks is 4. All the more reason for you to be spending your Eggy Assaults where you can for better ruin casts. Level 76, Enhanced Outburst. Simply increases Outburst's potency to 90, just makes AoE more powerful, and all previous rules to this skill still apply. 
Used for AoE spam on three or more enemies. Level 78, Enhanced Bane. This is a fairly powerful buff if we think about it. Bane has a 100% chance to copy the full duration of Bio and Miasma onto all enemies hit. So now while there are tanks pulling enemies, we can preemptively get Bane ready. First group of enemies we can cast Miasma and Bio on one of the enemies. And when the tank is done running to grab more enemies, pop Bane for the full dots on nearly everything pulled. Since we can't cast while moving outside of trances, we'll probably be only spamming Ruin 2 along the way, so we can at least spend our time preparing for a Bane cast. We'll be able to get out more outbursts with this plan in action. And now for the big one, level 80, Enhanced Firebird Trance. Leave it to the Firebird Trance to be a big level up twice. This trait makes Firebird Trance do double duty. Not only is it now Dreadworm Trance with an extra set of fire-based spells, it is also like Summon Bahamut. Using Firebird Trance now summons a mighty Demi-Phoenix to battle for you in place of your pet. Upon being summoned, Phoenix casts Everlasting Flight, a 100 potency heal over time for 21 seconds, or a 700 potency heal in total. This is a fairly beefy heal, but isn't the main attraction. Demi Phoenix acts the exact same as Demi Bahamut. Scarlet Flame is a 150 potency attack on the target and used any time you cast a spell. Enkindle Bahamut has changed to Enkindle Phoenix, executing the same 650 potency AoE with 50% drop off, now called Revelation. So now, add on to two more Enkindlings to the order of events I mentioned earlier at the end of level 72. Base Summoner, Dreadworm Trance, Bahamut, Firebird Trance, and Phoenix. It all builds on the previous sections and eventually has allowed you to being mostly focused on summoning big dragons and big phoenixes. And remember, Firebird Trance does not give you any Dreadworm Aether, so you have to start over from square one after it is done. There is also no size command for Demi Phoenix as of patch 5.2. How did they not learn from Bahamut? I have no idea. So with all of that in place, let's go over our final opener. Pre-pull, summon your pet, Ifrit ideally, use place to put him in front of the boss, pre-cast Ruin 3, and then do the following. Eggy Assault, Energy Drain, Tri Disaster, Eggy Assault 2, Lucid Dreaming, Eggy Assault, Aether Pact into Dreadworm Trance, Eggy Assault 2, Enkindle, Ruin 3, Fester and Tri Disaster, Ruin 3, Death Flare, Summon Bahamut, Ruin 4, Enkindle Bahamut, Fester, Ruin 4, Ruin 3, Ruin 3, Ruin 4, Enkindle Bahamut, Ruin 3, Ruin 4, Energy Drain and Swift Cast, Ruin 3, Fester, and then fill a Ruin 3 into a Firebird Trance, where afterwards the pattern will essentially repeat from start. Firebird Trance really added a lot of planning to make the most use out of all of our resources. So same as always, get your pet and pre-pull Ruin 3 cast to hit the enemy as soon as the tank pulls. Eggy Assault in order to immediately start weaving. We'll weave in Energy Drain to get some Aether Flow and get it on cooldown, and try Disaster to get our dots rolling. Eggy Assault 2 to get one of our charges spent, and we've been lucid dreaming to keep our mana high. We then spend our other Eggy Assault to weave in Aether Pact and Dreadworm Trance into Eggy Assault 2 for Enkindle Weaving. With this, we now have all of our major skills on cooldown and a full stack of Ruin 4 charges, which we won't be spending yet because of being able to weave with Ruin 3 during Dreadworm Trance. We used Aether Pact here to be able to line up with all other party buffs, and to make sure we got all of our strongest hits in under Aether Pact, which will be coming later. So, with no other major off-globals to spend, we go back to our rotation and use Ruin 3 into Festa to get that cooldown rolling, and use the free Tri Disaster from going into Dreadworm Trance while everyone's party buffs are up and will be maximally buffed. We then do one more Ruin 3 to weave in Death Flare immediately into Summon Bahamut. 
No point in using the whole duration of the buff when we have more powerful stuff hidden away. This is also why we kept our Ruin 4 stacks. With Bahamut out, we can Ruin 4 into Enkindling Bahamut to immediately start the cooldown for a second use of it, and use our second Festa to have both Aetherflow stacks used. This has all also been under our Aether Pact. We finish off Aether Pact with a final Ruin 4. With that done, we just fill in two more Ruin 3s to wait out the timer on our second Enkindle Bahamut. We then use our third Ruin 4 cast to weave in Enkindle Bahamut once again. We then use Ruin 3 to wait out cooldowns and use our final Ruin 4 to weave in Energy Drain and Swift Cast when Energy Drain comes off of cooldown. I specifically tried to build previous openers to not use Swift Cast to help newer players get used to the job and using it where needed, but I would be remiss not to use it here for our level cap opener. This also allows us to do one final instant cast to Ruin 3 and then Fester Weave again, leaving us with only one more charge to use when the cooldown is up. So now we have just about all of our stuff used and our dots will run out here. We can manually reapply and then Ruin 3 and 2 filler until we get OGCDs back. Just be sure to use everything in similar ways to your opener and you should be perfectly fine. Don't leave stuff off cooldown and get it out to hurt the enemies as hard as you can. If you want to progress further in your summoner skills and get more info into more technical aspects and getting the most out of your play, I recommend going to awkmorning.com. I'm in no way affiliated with this site, but it is a very well kept up site that will keep up with future expansions. Just be ready to go in with the intent to study. I personally understand most high-end concepts and even I was overwhelmed with how much info there was for the getting started section, and how it was organized. But otherwise, it is a very good resource and I highly recommend it. It will go into almost every detail you could possibly hope for it to go into. Thank you for watching my Summoner 1-80 to skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. My goal is to help players improve in whatever ways I can. Take care, and have fun in your adventures across Eorzea. May the power of an Anidhogs lay waste to your enemies.